Greetings folks, this is going to be about setting up the Matec F411 WSE, great little board, uh, using the iNav configurator. It's a brand new board, uh, untouched, so I'll plug it in. We get the flashing lights. We'll also see it's automatically selected the right uh, driver on the Mac so I can connect. There we go, it's connected. We get a few warnings up here because we haven't set anything up at all. Step number one is to do the calibration. Calibrate accelerometer. Okay, we'll do that. Calibrate acceler accelerometer. And you should know about this if you've read anything in iNav. Doesn't matter which orientation you do it in, as long as you do all six. And because this is a double stack board, it makes it easy to get the angles absolutely right. Not that that's totally crucial, I don't think. All right, moving on. Next step down is the mixer. What we should do is change that to aeroplane because I'll be setting up an aeroplane. And you can choose what sort of aeroplane at this stage. Uh, standard aeroplane for me. Load and apply. This will save and reboot it. So what it's done is inserted two motors. I only need one motor, so I'll delete one of them. And when they're talking about flaps here, they're actually talking about flapperons, I think. So this is um, the way it's set up now. Using the flap function in iNav, we'll actually be doing, using flapperons, which means you'll be operating the ailerons as flaps. So. I don't need them, so I'll get rid of those lines. So now we've got Servo 3, Stabilised Roll, Servo 4, Stabilised Roll, that's the ailerons, Servo 5, Stabilised Yaw, that's the rudder, Sta Servo 2, Stabilised Pitch, that's the elevator. That's all good for the moment, so let's save and reboot that. Moving on to presets. Ignore presets, they're stupid. Don't use them at all. That's my advice. Now this board has two hardware UARTs or serial inputs and two soft serial as well. I've never used soft serial but you can use them if you don't have enough hardware UARTs. You can set up soft serial to plug extra stuff in. All I'll be using is the two hardware UARTs. Now this first line here, the USB VCP, never touch that. That's sort of the communication of the board with the USB I think. Always need that. This UART, uh, we want to put the GPS on UART 1 because UART 2 is the inverted one that takes uh, SBUS. So we'll turn off that MSP. That's for just old style boards, I think. Not relevant these days for, for our new boards. And we'll go over to sensors and tick GPS. The board rate, you'll have to work out from your GPS what the, the correct board rate is. Um, I've always just left it as that and it's worked fine with the GPS units that I've used, which are linked in the description if you want to check them out. So here we go, we've got uh, GPS, serial, that's all good. Next configuration. Just telling you what the sensors are there. We need to enable motor and servo output. And we don't want to spin the motors when armed. Servo re refresh rate, 50 hertz for normal analog servos. If you've got uh, fast Digital servos, you can change that to a higher refresh rate, but uh, generally I just leave that on 50. I wouldn't change any of them. Sensor alignment, usually I have to add some pitch degrees so that the plane will fly level in angle mode. Uh, I usually start with 4 degrees, positive 4 degrees. Roll degrees, you would only adjust that if you mounted your board slightly tilted sideways, and your degrees if you mount your board sideways or uh, 180 degrees rotated around so that you can get access to the USB port then you would change the your degrees there if you're mounting it 90 degrees out you change that to 90 degrees or if you if you're mounting it 180 degrees rotated around then you change that to 180 degrees moving on yes I'm using S bus so I'll leave that as that if yes we want voltage monitoring we don't have to change any of that yes we're using the GPS for navigation uh, and that generally works for me. Yes, we're using current sensing and that is the correct scaling. If you go to the Matec product website, you'll see what the correct scaling is to give you the correct current reading. 
none of these. You can put your craft name in there if you want to show it on the screen. As I said, I'm not using those uh, soft serials, so we can turn that off. I don't need telemetry output from the board. I'm using the OSD. I do permanently want air mode engaged. Uh, profile selection with the sticks. No, I don't want that. don't want to uh, accidentally change something by wiggling the sticks. The rest of it can stay the same. All right, save and reboot again. All right, moving on to failsafe. Okay, what do we want to happen in a failsafe? We want return to home, of course. So click return to home, save and reboot. PID tuning. The roll P and I, I would leave them as they are. They are absolutely fine. Pavel Spakalski recently showed that you can have P at zero and it still flies fine. I think a little bit of P actually flies a little bit better. So I would leave it like that. If you choose some of the presets, uh, they'll change these values to stupid values sometimes, I think. Feed forward, these are good starting values for feed forward as well. If you use the preset aircraft one, that'll drop that down to 15, which will give you not very much movement of the control surfaces when you're in a stabilized mode. The correct way to do it, I think, is to uh, compare acro mode to manual mode while looking at the plane, wiggle the sticks and, and increase these values until the movement of the control surface is 90% of the manual mode when you're in angle or acro or something like that. That'll give you plenty of control when you're in a stabilized mode and you'll also achieve that when you do the auto tune as well but I find it's easier just to uh, do it manually. But start with these values, check the control surface movements. If you haven't got enough control surface movement, increase these values. If there's no difference between stabilized mode and manual mode, then reduce these values. Something you also have to do is work out the roll, pitch and yaw rates that your plane can achieve. So you need to go out and fly before you even put the flight control board on. Fly in manual mode with no uh, reduced rates, 100% rates. Do a quick roll at your normal flying speed or flying speed that, that will achieve a roll. Count how many seconds it takes to do the roll. Uh, then if it takes one second to do a roll, then this number will be 360 degrees per, se per second. If it takes two seconds to do the roll, that this number will be 180 degrees per second. If it takes three seconds to do the roll, then it'll be 120 degrees per second. Same with pitch, yaw, um, well it takes ages to do a yaw turn I think, but you might be able to work it out. I often end up with something like 120 for roll rate, 180 for pitch rate and 90 for yaw rate. But the whole stabilisation system relies on getting these numbers correct or roughly correct and I would say these numbers are too high. If you start with them too high, the flight control board will think the plane can do more than it actually can do. It won't behave the way the CLI inputs recommended on the INAV wiki uh, will increase these to 60 degrees, maximum roll rate and maximum pitch rate, pitch angle. And if you hover over the question mark there, you'll find out what they're actually talking about. That's the maximum roll in angle and it's also the maximum uh, bank angle that the plane will automatically do in a navigation mode. Uh, so you can, at this stage, increase them to 60 or we can do it later on in the CLI inputs. These rates here, uh, you can think of as the same as the rates you would put in your transmitter. If you want to reduce your rates to 50% if it's, if it's uh, you know, too aggressive, this is where you would do it. But you should have your plane set up so that you can leave these at 100 and fly it normally in uh, manual mode. The rest of these parameters should be right out of the box. I really don't know what to do to change them. Scrolling down, and now Pavel suggests reducing this to 20, gyro low pass filter cutoff frequency. Uh, I don't really understand this, so I'll just do what Pavel says. And the rest of it I won't worry about. Save. Now advanced tuning. This panel is multi-rotor stuff, so we're not interested in that. This panel, return to home and land settings, uh, we want, I actually like uh, at least and linear descent, say, well I change that to 50 metres, that's safe for my area. <coughs> Don't leave it at 10 metres, that's a ridiculous preset, should change that I think. This is the altitude the plane will return to home at, if you select return to home and in a failsafe situation. And if you select this at least linear descent, then 
if you're flying higher than 50 meters then it'll start returning to home then descend to 50 meters in a linear fashion uh, when it gets back to above your point if you have at least it will remain at the height that the failsafe happens at so if you're one kilometer up it will circle around your head one kilometer up which isn't much use at all so at least linear descent is the best idea uh, this is an odd one um, i think that should always be never going over to the fixed wing navigation settings cruise throttle is an important one uh, you need to work out what your stall speed or your stall throttle position is uh, 1400 is good for most planes that are, have adequate power if you have an underpowered plane you might need to increase that to say 1600 or something like that 1400 is usually okay this is the throttle setting that it will cruise home on basically or it'll if you put it into a cruise mode like altitude hold loiter uh, return to home it will use that throttle setting it'll increase throttle to gain height and decrease throttle to reduce height but for cruising it'll be that that setting so if you've got that too low your plane is going to stall halfway home minimum throttle maximum throttle i wouldn't change them i wouldn't change these bank these angles here this is for uh, or when the plane's in automatic control in a navigation mode you don't want the bank angle to be too much or it might uh, stall itself out of the sky loiter radius 50 meters it's a pretty wide radius i often change that to 40. okay save and reboot receiver now in this page you can change the expo uh, in manual mode that's this one here it's preset at 70 which is a pretty high extra expo i usually change that to about 50 or so the rest i would leave as they are i have my rssi channel on channel 11 so i'll just change that to channel 11. Uh, you need to connect your receiver make sure that you have it all programmed correctly in the transmitter modes you have to set up your channels for an arm switch angle mode i have on channel six i just remember all of these i only use angle mode to to check that the board is aligned correctly really and to check that it's flying okay don't use it as a, a normal uh, flight mode altitude hold that's channel seven for me position hold also channel seven so they're both channel seven when the switch that operates channel seven is in the full down position we get altitude hold and position hold which is a loiter mode so that will loiter around the point where the switch was uh, activated maintaining the uh, altitude that's a very useful one that one return to home i have on channel eight switch in the full down position and switch in the middle position on channel 8 i have manual just like that nav cruise i have to come on when i'm doing uh, altitude hold there switch in the middle position and that should maintain altitude and heading for a sort of a cruising flight channel 7 nav launch i don't use nav launch anymore i don't see the value of it really um, i'd prefer to launch with a bit of power assisted it means you don't have to throw your shoulder out to get up enough air speed at the moment i do have uh, auto trim and auto tune on channel five rarely use them maybe an auto trim every now and then if uh, things get out of whack to switch cameras we set up this user one control uh, and that's sort of a two position switch uh, well, what's a spare channel channel 10 maybe channel 12 just to be safe and i do have an alternate osd too on that same switch that the angle is on this is just so that i can set up a second osd screen that doesn't have the the distance um, for obvious reasons i can switch the distance off if i'm recording video and i'm going to upload it on, onto youtube of course you can uh, select your own modes now you'll see the angle mode has gone blue because that is now active a lot of these won't go blue even though they're selected like the alt hold, alt hold there you need uh, gps lock and all that sort of stuff to actually see them activating you just have to see where the little dot is here to to know that it actually will activate when all the conditions are correct adjustments there's nothing to do there servos if a servo is needs to be reversed this is where you do it here and you can change rates here too GPS is just for checking that your GPS is actually working. Uh, the best way to check whether your GPS is working before it's even 
acquired any satellites is to look at this total messages number here. If that's sitting at zero, your GPS isn't active or hasn't been connected correctly. Things to do are mainly make sure that light is on on the GPS so it's getting power and uh, swap the RX and TX pins over. That's the usual error you'll make. Give it a few seconds and that should start counting up uh, when it's working correctly. If you're in a situation where your GPS is actually acquiring satellites where you're sitting, uh, it will show your position on the map here eventually, once you get enough satellites. Mission control, not something I've ever done. Motors, don't need that. OSD, here's where you set up your OSD the way you want. I actually have a, a pre-saved uh, OSD setup saved these from the CLI screen and I just paste, copy and paste this into the CLI and that gives me the OSD that I want there rather than setting it up individually every time. Uh, LED strip, never done that. Sensors, you can see if the sensors are working there by wiggling the board around, that's pretty cool. Tethered logging, not something I've ever done. Black box, Again, I haven't done that, and the CLI. If you read the INAV wiki page, it'll uh, suggest CLI values that you need to plug in here. And I have them saved on a, a separate file. This is the one that changes that uh, those uh, maximum bank angles to 60 degrees. And this line here allows you to arm the board no matter what angle it's at. That's an important one. I uh, can't remember what that is. If your board resets itself for some reason in flight, it uh, will say it will use the original uh, first arm position as your home, which is good. Return to home altitude there. Fail safe return to home. We've done that on the on the uh, fail safe screen. All of these are on the fail safe screen. Uh, this line uh, you can incre manually increase the throttle when it's in a navigation mode if you want to. I think that's a, a good idea if you found your cruise throttle is, isn't enough. And this is the uh, I-term limit stick position suggested by Pavel Spakulski. And uh, this is the position, stick 20% out that is, where the stabilized mode will change to sort of a manual mode or the I-term will, will be locked. Um, so that's just something I'm trying. You don't have to worry about that if you don't want to. So what we do is we just copy these, plug them in here, hit return, it will enter all of them, hit save, and it will save it and reboot. And I'll also show you the OSD. So this is giving me two OSD screens. This, the zeros here are the default screen and the ones is the first alternative screen. Uh, so I'll just copy them back to CLI paste them in here, hit return, and that's my OSD set up, save that. So that's how I like my OSD to be, nothing in the middle, I don't like those horizons or anything like that. And if we change to the first alternative, you'll see the uh, distance uh, and total distance has disappeared there. This one down here is an estimate of the wind strength, which I always find quite interesting because uh, often flying in strong winds. So there we go, that's how to set up the Matek F411 WSE, which is a great little board. Cleaner video feed and uh, four servos is quite enough for most planes. Thanks for watching.